very good evening all i'm aditi lama with the thursday night edition of south asian news welcome to vision of asia the voice of our community we are coming to you from our studio in new york city here is what's happening in the coronavirus pandemic today global cases of the coronavirus have now topped 13.6 million with at least 585,000 deaths here in the United States, we are looking at 3.5 million COVID-19 cases and more than 138,000 deaths as the nation tries to grapple with this novel virus. Cases continue to skyrocket in new hotspot states of California, Florida, Arizona and Texas. And some states are preparing for the worst by bringing in refrigerated trucks as morgues fill up. 39 states have reported a surge in number of cases with a worry of having shortages in hospital beds. Florida has become the global epicenter of the pandemic now, with today reporting the largest one-day increase in COVID-19 deaths since the pandemic began. In California, as of today, there are a total of more than 356,000 cases, with currently a positivity rate of 7.2%. In Texas, the governor is urging the use of masks as COVID-19 deaths in the state hit a new high. If you are in the state surging with coronavirus cases, Reach us with your story and your experience, especially if you are a South Asian on the front line. Email us on events at itvgold.com. And please take care of yourself and remember to practice social distancing, washing hands and wearing a mask. Protect yourself and others around you. And talking about masks, most states and businesses are requiring masks. With today, large retailers such as CVS, Target and Publix joining other large retailers in requiring masks across all of its stores in the country. More than 30 U.S. states have implemented a mandate on face coverings in public, including here in New York State, where Governor Andrew Cuomo launched a national campaign today to urge Americans to wear face covering in public to stop the spread of the virus. The campaign is titled Mask Up America. And the Health and Human Services Department has said that the widespread of mask use and staying out of crowded bars and restaurants can help avert more shutdowns and said that in hot zones, we really need almost 90% of public to be wearing masks when out, when they're interacting with other people. So we hope that our audience here continues to take these precautionary measures seriously. And with that, let's begin tonight's episode comprising much on COVID-19 impact, as well as look into South Asians in fashion industry. Here are the headlines. Harleen Koran latest 2020 collection, fashion-driven Indian clothing, New York City. Akila Takapali on mental health awareness, COVID-19 and resources, MindPath Care Centers. First Vivekanand Yoga University launches outside of India, Consul General of India, New York. It's time for a show break on Vision of Asia. Voice of the Community will be back shortly. Welcome back. I'm Aditi Lama and this is Vision of Asia Thursday night episode. Starting the show tonight, we are looking at the coronavirus pandemic impact measures and advice. It is no secret as the nation grapples with the economic and health ramifications of COVID-19, many are struggling with their mental health with an increase of panic, anxiety and sadness prevalent during this time. According to a Census Bureau survey, one in three Americans are reporting symptoms of depression or anxiety and people are experiencing challenges due to economic downturns, uncertainty about the disease, and much more. So how can we address this ongoing wave of mental stress and perhaps pain for many that are suffering the loss of a loved one or are struggling with mental illness themselves? We spoke with expert Akila Takapali on addressing these concerns, the psychological impact of COVID-19, and much insight and many tips in combating mental health crisis due to COVID-19. Very thoughtful conversation. Here is Akila Takapali. There are over 3 million cases in the United States of COVID-19 with over 138,000 deaths. The numbers are so large that it's important for us to understand how we should process it. So my question to you is, according to you, psychologically, how should we process these increasing number for ourselves? That's a great question. You know, processing such large numbers is very difficult for pretty much most of us. Uh, maybe some people who are working in that field uh, in immunology and public health, for them, these have more of a context. Um, but for those of us in the general public, these are numbers that create more anxiety and panic than create any clear understanding of the seriousness of the virus. 
Um, I think we need to look at these numbers and absolutely be aware of what's happening, the trend of the numbers, and be aware from time to time. But as I tell my patients, it doesn't appear to serve a purpose in uh, relieving the stress, which is why a lot of us look at those numbers in the first place when we're looking at them too often. So I am telling my patients, for example, to limit the number of times that they're checking their phone or watching continuous news shows that are tracking the numbers of cases and deaths in order to be able to have some peace of mind in between and have a chance to focus on some positive thoughts and positive activities in the middle of that. Although I do think that it would also be a mistake to only uh, do things that are distracting and not pay attention to the numbers at all. That could also be dangerous in not understanding that the virus might be spreading rather than um, slowing down or to think that a place that somebody might be thinking of going to or needs to go to is safe, uh, whereas it's not. If And one would know that only by looking at certain numbers, but limiting everything in moderation is the advice that I give my patients as well. You know, um, could you display one of the techniques? I know you wanted to do that. I would love for the audience to see it. Sure. So one of uh, the basic, uh, you know, there's a few pranayama exercises that can increase um, mental stillness as well as immunity. One of the ones that I can show you today is called Anulom Vilom. And um, so it's a simple practice. I'll just show you a quick demonstration. So you can take your hand like this. So you basically need your uh, thumb and your middle finger. So you would close your right nostril and breathe out first through your left nostril. So you breathe out and then breathe in through the left nostril to a count of six. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and close the left and out to the count of six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then you would continue this by doing the same thing, going up the right nostril and down the left nostril. And you know, a good number would be maybe 20 sets, so left to right, right to left being one set. And close your eyes, I recommend, and listen to your breath. Uh, silence is a good environment to do this in, but you can do this even in the middle of a stressful work day or stress of any other kind if you can find a space to do this. Also, kapal uh, bhati, which is expelling air uh, through your nostrils, um, it, it can really uh, help um, increase the lung capacity as well. So just, and you can do that as many times as you can um, you can endure. It can become um, it can become uh, what is it fatiguing after a while. But as many times as you can do, and then as you do this every day, uh, your capacity will also increase. And um, there's many more that I would love to share that might be more difficult to demonstrate. But if you have a local yoga practitioner who does incorporate uh, pranayama, I would encourage you to use this time to seek out those resources. Um, or, you know, if you're local to me, you know, I would love to share that um, with my patients as well. Yes. Well, I truly appreciate you for sharing those techniques. They're very easy. I'm sure our audience uh, yeah. will learn it and hopefully practice it. Akila, I truly appreciate you for your time here with ITV Gold. I would love for you to give one last message to our audience, perhaps a message uh, to the ones that are struggling in silence right now. Yes. So, you know, there's so many um, forms of struggle right now, and I, I, I see in the patients that I'm uh, privileged enough to try to help that it is not easy and it is um, it's it's very difficult I think so for healthcare workers I'll, let me start there for healthcare workers who are uh, trying to do their best uh, to save as many lives to help as many people there can be a sense of guilt when we can't help as many people or when we don't get the outcomes we want so I encourage those who are on the front line in various capacities to reach for help for your own mental health, 
to practice some of these things that we talked about so that we can prevent mental, uh, you know, mental fatigue or moral injury where we have to, you know, be okay with not having the outcomes that we want. Or, um, and for those who are the, uh, you know, lay people or others, anybody else who's suffering, ask for help when, when you don't feel well. And it's okay. It's, I think, uh, I know in the South Asian community, sometimes we feel it's difficult to ask for help because we feel it's some sort of judgment on our strength uh, or our intelligence. But let me tell you that everybody can have times in their lives or multiple times in their lives where they need help, and these are unique times, and they're very large impacts on our lives, um, and even impacts that we don't realize yet. And so if we're not feeling as hopeful and as, as, as uh, calm as we want to feel, then there are therapists, there are medication management providers, if that's needed, um, or at least reach out to your own family and friends and ask them what they would recommend if it feels too daunting to reach out uh, to a medical provider. Or reach out to some of the hotlines that, um, that I uh, mentioned, uh, whether it's domestic abuse, whether it's uh, suicide prevention, whether it's 911, if you're feeling unsafe to yourself or to others. Um, and, you know, use this time, I, I would say to everybody, whether they're at that level of suffering or they're, you know, still trying to cope the best that they can, I would say this is a time for us to all to focus on also going inwards and getting to know ourselves and getting to know what true mental health can be. It can be even better uh, than we imagined. So. I would encourage uh, all of us to be aware and seek help and know that there is help if you need help and know that we're all in this together as well. Let's now take a look at the Consulate General of India, New York, who jointly with the Jaipur Foot USA hosted a virtual launch of the Vivekananda Yoga University, world's first yoga university outside of India. Founded on the principles of renowned Swami Vivekananda on universal welfare, the university will offer online graduate programs based on scientific principles and new research approaches to ancient Indian practice of yoga. The virtual event saw Indian Minister of State for External Affairs Mr. Murali Dharan express his gratitude to Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi for making yoga a global movement especially during the occasion of celebrating the 6th Annual International Day of Yoga. Applications for fall 22 semester are now open at the Yoga Institute. Here are some highlights from the launch of Vivekanand Yoga University featuring key officials and many dignitaries. Friends and elders, it's a pleasure to know that Vivekananda Yoga University is formally being launched through the virtual mode on 23rd of June. It's the only university outside India on yoga. Recently we had the International Day of Yoga. It has been the efforts of the Honorable Prime Minister which resulted in UN declaring 21st June as the International Day of Yoga. And now the Vivekananda Yoga University is being launched under the guidance of the world-renowned yoga guru Sri H.R. Nagendra and I have my dear elder friend Sri Prem Bandari as one of the directors of that university. The Vivekananda Yoga University will translate these motives into action and the contribution of India to the world. That message will be spread far and wide. With these words, I offer my greetings to the university. Vivekananda Yogi University ne Bharat mein yoga ki anusandhan ko le kar ke aur vishwa mein yoga ki anusandhan ko ek nai drishti pradhan ki hai. Ab mujhe khushi aur prasannata hai ki Amerika ki dharti par bhi Vivekananda Yogi University ko वहाँ के सरकारी तंत्र के द्वारा स्वीकृति मिली है 
यह बहुत गौरव की बात है मुझे पूरा विश्वास है डॉक्टर नागेंद्र जी जो हमारे इस योग परंपरा के भारत की ऋषि परंपरा के एक बहुत बड़े गौरव हैं और आपने जो कार्य किया है वो युगों युगों तक भारत का गौरव बढ़ाने वाला कार्य किया है मुझे विश्वास है जैसे ऐसा ने भारत में कार्य किया है ऐसे अमेरिका में भी यह पहली योग यूनिवर्सिटी होगी अनुसंधान के क्षेत्र में और इसके द्वारा बहुत ही प्रशस्त कार्य होगा मैं आशान्वित हूँ और डॉक्टर नागेंद्र जी के इस महान कार्य के लिए ऋषि कार्य के लिए भारत का गौरववर्धन करने वाले इस महान अनुष्ठान के लिए उनको हृदय से बहुत बहुत बधाई देता आई एम वेरी ग्लैड टू हियर दट विवेकानंद योगा यूनिवर्सिटी इज बींग लॉन्च इन अमेरिका फॉर द वेरी फर्स्ट टाइम the university espousing yogic sciences are being launched in america let me congratulate dr nagendra and his whole team in making this possible and through the scientific appraisal of yoga i'm sure millions more on the planet will get benefit of it let's make the world free from violence let's make this world free from diseases and distress by bringing yoga to every home time for a short break stay with us on vision of asia voice of the community will be back shortly and welcome back this is vision of asia the south asian news segment and i am aditi lamba we have now a segment featuring popular indian american fashion designer Harleen Kaur on her latest 2020 collection. One of the fastest growing Indian American clothing brands here in the United States, Harleen Kaur features unique and versatile collection that blends Indian clothing with western aesthetics, promoting an Indo-western style and clothing. Ethically produced in the garment district of New York City, Harleen Kaur label brings in an expression of personality, values and beliefs with an ideology that we're all threads of a unique fabric with collections that reflect that. Here is Harleen Kaur speaking to us on the inspiration behind the 2020 collection and her philosophy in fashion. Um tell us a little bit about this new 2020 collection and you know what inspired you to create the kind of patterns and sequences that we see on it and also um you know what are your hopes from this collection? Yeah. So I mean I I think I've talked to you about this before. My mm -hmm. inspiration always varies so much from collection to collection. There's so many things that happen within the previous, you know, 5 to 6 months before a collection is released and all those things kind of inspire me and influence what is going to come out. Um in terms of of the the colors and the sequins and the fabrics, um it's kind of twofold sometimes i go off of a fabric i find and then you know adjust colors and pattern accordingly and then sometimes i just think of some floral patterns or some type of motif that i really love and then design a fabric from scratch from there um i did all of that this select this season um i also tried to give more unique or more like a bigger variety of more unique prints um a lot of feedback we got last year was that people wanted to see more prints and more um designs especially for men so we tried to tackle that this year um my hopes for the collection are just that you know once weddings resume that people start to um or continue i guess purchasing from this one and hopefully i mean we haven't made concrete plans for our 2021 collection because so many things are up in the air but the beauty of a lot of the 2020 collection just as as it was as you know was prevalent last year too is that so many things are versatile you can mix and match so many pieces there's you know certain skirts that can pair with other tops in the collection or they can pair with the matching top um it's meant to pair with things that are already in your closet um and you know some of the jacket dresses are meant to be worn throughout the day so from day to night whether you're at work whether you're 
um, at dinner with some friends or whether you're at an Indian wedding reception, you know, we really tried to keep that in mind again going forward with this collection. Yes, for sure. And what I also found uh, very interesting about the collection was the fact that uh, this time your collection features children, um, it features members of all age groups. Um, how important was that for you? And you know, Herlene, for audience that's watching this right now on ITV Gold, give us a little insight into what Herlene Core as a brand is and you know what you like to promote as, as your voice in fashion. Yeah, so I mean, as a brand, we definitely are, um, we have very strong values in terms of um, producing ethically and giving quality products to our customers. Um, I think, you know, in the past when I was looking for Indian clothing, for Indian events, I never really... I never really resonated with what was out there. So uh, when I started, I wanted to do a lot, a lot of colors. I wanted to um, have stuff that resonated with um, Indian men, especially Sikh men. So providing turbans and more comfortable Indian garments for menswear was definitely important. Same with women's wear. I mean, we have like floral print skirts that are so comfortable. They are a lightweight satin, but they look like enough for an Indian wedding reception or um, a gala night, you know, there's so many different variations of events that you could wear these items to. Um, so having versatile, unique items was definitely important to us. Um, we produce everything locally, like you said before, and that's just because we have, we feel like, I feel like I have complete control over what's going on. I can walk into my factory before COVID. I could walk into my factory every day to see what was going on. Um, so that was really important. And then last year, we got a lot of um, inquiries for kids wear. So we did a lot of custom kids wear last year. So I figured maybe we should include it in the collection this year. And I love um, the look of when like an entire family is kind of like on the same color scheme, same page for a certain event or wedding. So that was really nice to be able to do those family looks, um, this collection. And um, another huge thing for us is, is sourcing responsible materials. And um, I'm not sure if you saw, but this collection, we actually included even more um, sustainable clothing options. So we have new fabrics that are actually partially recycled and partially, um, or sorry, partially recycled cotton, partially recycled um, polyester. And then we use um, fabrics from a mill that is actually Ecotech certified. So what that means is they don't use harmful chemicals and dyes in the process of dyeing um, the fabrics and printing on the fabrics, which is also really important in terms of, you know, creating a sustainable um, fashion, a more sustainable fashion industry. So we're working towards doing more of that for next year. Um, it's definitely a process that takes time because there's so many things that there's not really good sustainable options for yet, but we're trying to um, push those forward, like you know sequins and metallics. Those are things that are a little harder to find that are sustainable, but we're pushing that too. And that is all for tonight's episode. Remember to send us your suggestions and get your voices and organizations on our show. Email us on events at itvgold.com or follow us on Facebook at itvgold. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel to watch many of our popular shows for free. Thank you for joining us tonight from Queens, New York. This is Vision of Asia. I'm Aditi Lamba. Take care and be well.